shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see the face of God and live. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me. And Blessed are your poor, for the kingdom shall be there. Blessed are you that weep and mourn, for one day you shall. Morning. We begin the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Together let us see the entrance antiphon. As for me, in justice I shall behold your face. I shall be filled with the vision of your glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Once again we enter into this mystery of Christ's love for us. So let us take a moment to acknowledge our sins and failings, Let's keep in mind those who have asked us to pray for them, especially the sick. Let us pray that the Lord will stretch his hand over this weary world and cure us from this pandemic which has affected so many lives. Let us also pray for the church, that we may truly be the bride of Christ and a witness to his goodness in the world. Lord Jesus, you sow the seeds of mercy and reconciliation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you shower us with mercy and kindness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you nourish us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring each of us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who, for the faith they profess, our account Christians, the grace to reject what is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitile, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall we, shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The seed that fill, falls on the ground will yield a fruitful, fruitful harvest. The seed that falls on the ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have visited the land and watered it. Greatly have you enriched it. God's watercourse are filled. You have prepared the grain. The seed that falls on the ground will yield a fruitful harvest. Thus have you prepared the land, dredging it barrows, breaking up its cop plots, softening it with showers, and blessing its yield. The seed that falls on the ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have crowned the year with your bounty, and your paths overflow with richest harvest. The untilled meadows overflow with it, and rejoicing flows of the hill. The, the seed, seed that falls on the ground will yield the fruitful harvest. The fields are garmented with flocks, and the valleys blanketed with grain. They shout and sing for joy. The seed that falls on the ground will yield the fruitful harvest. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not on its own accord, but because of the one who subject, subjected it in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains, even until now, and only that but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The seed is the word of God, Christ is the soul, and all who come to him will have life forever. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. This reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such a large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. As he spoke to them at length in the parable, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on a path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once, because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it was withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell around thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Far too often, we forget the power of words. And there are two types of words. Words we use to communicate each and every day. Words we use in prayer. But when you come down to it, there's one important word. And that is the word of God. Because those words are more powerful than any words we could possibly use. We can change the whole world with words, if we use them well. We can draw others to the Lord Jesus with words. We can intercede for others with the Lord 
with words. But they must come from the heart, both the spoken word and the word of God. We can allow the word of God to transform us and thus show its power to others. And the scriptures are filled with times when the Lord prayed and spoke and many were converted. Many were not. And the reason for that was their hardness of heart. The prophet Isaiah in the first reading reflects on the word of God. When God speaks, reality is created. When God sends his word, the world is redeemed and transformed. This happens, however, in the way which was shown to us in the reading from last Sunday. If you remember these words, so important, in humility, in meekness, not in power or force. These words remind us how Christ touched lives. It reminds us of the gentleness of the apostles and early Christians who put up so much for the sake of the kingdom of God, even to the point of death. Their meekness, their humility, their lack of power and force. The gospel also speaks of the word and how it is like a seed sown into the ground. When seed is sown, it does not develop equally. This is a reality that anyone working with plantation know as a tough experience. Those who plant seed want to prepare the ground so that the seed will, not have, will have the best of results. If we were to plant grass, we would not normally choose to plant it in a pile of stones. Rather, we would prepare the ground first so that the grass might grow and be beautiful. You know, Jesus is aware of this difference and uses the reality of understandable images to show why the Word of God is not always effective. The ground, and in this sense you and me, are we prepared to accept the Word of God? to make it our own and active in our lives and most importantly to share the word with others how do we do this with humility meekness and not with power or force saint paul in his letter to the romans gives us an image of christians straining toward the kingdom of god these christians are the ground fully prepared for the seed that word of God. And there is nothing holding back their deepest desires for the kingdom of God except the reality of still living in this world. In other words, they had something to look forward to. And that something was planted in their minds and in their hearts by the word of God. And that same kingdom is our destiny. And if we want to be part of it, if we want to make it our own, we have to develop that union, that communication, and forge our minds and hearts with Christ Jesus. And as he told us, you will do the things I do, and even greater things. And if we see the work of ministry, missionaries, church ministers, how they go out into the community and have an effect on people's lives, which is beyond anything. But always doing it in imitation of Christ Jesus. Spiritually, we begin to understand what we must desire. And that is the word of God within ourselves. This is where it begins. This is where it matures. This is where it grows. And if we truly desire that word, then we will begin to prepare our hearts and minds to receive the word of God. As I've said so often, the Gospels use a wonderful word. The word is convinced. Peter used it when he identified Christ. We are convinced 
that you are the Son of God. And when we are convinced that the Word of God is life, strength, we are unafraid to be imitative of all those things that Christ is and unafraid and boldly proclaim the Word of God to others. If we say that we desire the Word of God and do nothing, then we are simply deceiving ourselves. That's like saying, I am Christian, but you know nothing about Christ. I am Catholic, we know nothing about the church, why we were called to the Catholic Church, and what we can do to spread the faith that Christ has given us with others. To do that, the roots have to be deep in our lives and in our relationship with Christ Jesus. And always remembering that it is not us, but Christ working in us, which brings us closer to Him and to others. God's Word will come to us, but unless we have prepared the ground, it will fall on the stones of our hearts. And if we do not nourish it with prayer, the sacraments, good works, it will wither and die. My friends, it is time now, in this era of our lives, in this era of this world, that we must prepare our hearts and our minds so that the seed, the Word of God, may fall in us, bear abundant fruit, and share that fruit with others. Christ has called us to be His modern-day disciples and apostles. And all we can say is, here I am, I come to do it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And now together as one good people, let us pray the creed where we do honor to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us approach our Heavenly Father with our prayers, confident of His infinite love for us. For all bishops, priests, deacons, and those preparing for church ministry, may the grace of God nourish them in mind, body, and spirit as they preach the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who serve in public office, may the Lord grant them hearts of justice and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. For those burdened with any manner of suffering, may God renew in them a hope that brings consolation and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For each of us, may the Lord bless us and increase within us a desire to grow closer to Him in all things. Let us pray to the Lord. For our world suffering through this pandemic, that the Lord may stretch His hand over His created world 
and give healing and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, may it truly symbol, be a symbol of Christ's presence in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of all those who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, please hear our prayers and grant them according to your holy will. For we make them in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. And by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ. Who humbled himself to share our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the Church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you. And grant that, when consumed by these, by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you said before you laid the foundation of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world and all its wonder to rule in your name over all that you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly give you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered in your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Douglas our Bishop, Robert our Bishop Emeritus, the order of bishops and all the clergy and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, and to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait for the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. May this meaning of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us. We receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is in. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. God.